Okay, I will. This is that gets my go. There, I said it. Happy now. Hey, everybody. Welcome to That Gets My Goat. I'm Big Anglovich. And I'm Rish Outfield. And I am a writer. Oh, look at you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Big Anglovich, and I am a writer. So there. <laughs> well, isn't that how you start your uh, ankle cast? It is, yeah. And do you do that as like a an affirmation kind of thing that you're good enough, you're smart enough, and <laughs> doggone it, people like you. Yeah, it's kind of like that. I read it in a book somewhere. It was actually a book about weight loss, but you know, it was a it, it was one of those things where they say you think of yourself as what you want to be, um, and talk about yourself as what you want to be, so that. You will be that, I That's guess. Right. I guess it's a thing that makes you want to be it. So I was saying I would start doing that. And that's right. And it forced me to say, and I'm Rish Outfield, and I've got a big knob. <laughs> Someday, Jennifer. Someday. So I, you had a topic today. Do you want to bring it up and introduce it? Oh, okay. Well, I, or I have guess... we already? Uh, we might have. I don't know. Um, we were going to talk a little bit about the magic spreadsheet, Ooh. which is this wonderfully magic Ooh. little tool that has been invented and put out there on the internet. So this is something that Abby Hilton introduced me to. Somebody, I don't even know who, to tell you the truth, although I have the spreadsheet open, so maybe it says it somewhere in the instructions. Okay, but, but 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 for those that are listening at home that are writers or would like to call themselves writers, can you introduce it? Yeah. Okay, so it's a uh, tool. Uh, it's basically just a, it's a game, more or less. It's a way to turn writing into a game for people. It's a way to incentivize yourself. Is incentivize a word? I probably shouldn't use that. I, I hate when they take adjectives and nouns and things like that and turn them into verbs but anyways it's a way to give you an incentive to write every day and so what you do is you write 250 words that is your goal it's a super small goal but it's all about developing consistency so if you write 250 words per day i mean you could write it in 15 minutes if that's all the time that you have but by the end of the year you will have written like a 90,000 word novel if you write 250 words a day. So 250 words a day, you get your one point. You can actually get extra points for writing more. If you write 500 words, you get two points. If you write 1,000, you get three. If you write 2,000, you get four. And I think that's as far as it goes. But what really matters is the consistency because every day that you write, you get a point in your chain. And the longer your chain gets, the more points you get. So at one day, you get one point for your chain. But, you know, two days you get two, three days you get three, and so so on and so forth. It keeps rising all the way until you get to 30. And uh, that's the most points that you can get from your chain, but you keep getting 30 every day. So a person who writes 250 words one day, or, or even a person who writes 2,000 words every other day, you know, that person will write more words than somebody who only writes 250 words per day but they'll get less points. Because the trick is to make it a habit, to get somebody doing it day after day after day. And that's more important than somebody that writes a huge amount and then doesn't write for six days. Exactly. Yeah, that's what they're going for. So somebody who writes every day for a month or whatever would earn like 500 points, but somebody who writes every other day only gets like 75 points by doing that. And I've noticed that. I mean, me, I, I, I convinced you to do this with me. And I was all saying how I was going to kick your butt, but I totally didn't. <laughs> I got my butt kicked because I have had troubles getting this habit going and writing every day. And, but you started out and you just kept your chain going for more than a week. I think it was eight days in a row. Before you ever missed. And so you got way more points than me. You've got like double the points that I have. Despite me even having some days where I wrote more than a thousand words... So I got three points for those days just for the writing, not counting the chain. But yeah, I'm still way behind in points. But the the really cool thing about it is that it's managed to get me to write a lot this month. 
I've done way more writing this month than I have in, I don't know, probably almost two years. And uh, I managed to finish. I had an idea where I wanted to rework a story that I'd done in the past. And I took that and I wrote all that stuff. And I managed to finish that, which I probably would have never done otherwise. And since then, I got another idea that I just jumped right on and have been working on as well. And I'm nearly done with that. Although I've gotten into a really dry spell. I think my worst week has been this last week where I've only managed to get like one out of six days, which is pretty crappy. And it doesn't get you a lot of points. (laughs) But uh, I, I need to definitely up that and get it going again because I need to finish this story. It was just going to be a nice short one, but sadly work has gotten really busy of late. Well, what's the solution? Uh, well, you know, I, I think I just need to stop being a wuss, really, because 15 minutes, you know, I should be able to do that. Well, you've got some kind of motivation to go running every single day and to diet and not eat a thousand M&Ms at one sitting, which you are wont to do. <laughs> what is the difference? Uh, I'm not sure. Is it that there's a competition? at your workplace for losing weight or is it this marathon that you're going to run in a couple of months? I think it's probably more the marathon than the competition, although there is both. Yeah, I have that marathon coming up and if I don't, you know, I've paid money for, though our plan has been to run a half marathon in June, a marathon in September. And so I've already paid money for the half marathon. I've already signed up and spent, it was like 70 bucks or something like that to get signed up for this half marathon i've already wasted the money on it i need to do something to make it a good experience because i don't know i mean i i'm gonna wind up being there in june with 13 and a half miles ahead of me and i'll be like shoot i wish i'd prepared myself for this because i've never run more than five and that I've only done once so far. So that might be my motivation. I don't know. But you have been getting up at dawn and running. <laughs> I know because you post pictures of yourself. That's true. Yeah. Uh, dawn comes a little later than it used to, at least, <laughs> because of daylight savings time. So it's not as, as much of a feat. There have been plenty of times where I've been up at dawn and I'll, uh, I don't know, I guess I believe in myself when it comes to it for running. There was a time when I didn't. I would struggle like crazy. I couldn't run a mile. I mean, I would run part of a mile and then I'd have to walk part and then run part and walk part and run and walk, you know, and I couldn't, I couldn't even run a whole mile. And there just came one day, and this was several years ago now, where... I got to the part where I would normally stop and walk and I said, no, screw this. I'm pushing through it. I'm going to make it further than normal. And I pushed through it and I made it a little further and I said, oh, I can make it a little further. And I kept pushing myself just a little further and I managed to run my entire route without ever stopping and walking that day. And something about that gave me the confidence to know that I can do it. You know, I may be fat and out of shape, but I can run that far. All I got to do is just keep going and you'll push through that wall and you'll make it. And so ever since then, I've never stopped to walk because I know that I can do it. I guess I just have that belief in myself. And maybe that's what I'm missing with writing is maybe I don't believe in myself enough quite yet. Maybe I haven't had that successful moment that... I see myself push through that wall and and move on. Well, is it comparable, though? I mean, how define that moment as far as writing goes? I don't know what that moment is as far as writing. It's hard to know. Maybe it's selling something to somebody instead of just putting it up on my own show because, hey, I'm an editor and I can say, yeah, we like this. I don't know what it would be. That would help me to feel like, hey, I can do this. What do you think it might be? I I don't know. Because I think of myself as a writer all the time now. Mm -hmm. And I don't know when that changed. But one thing that is new for us is that 
you know, now we've decided to run our own stories on the show, it makes me look at certain stories a different way. Instead of just saying, I'm writing this in my notebook and nobody is ever going to read it. I think, you know, a month from now, the Big and I could be sitting down and recording this for an episode of the show. In fact, we probably will. Wow. And yeah, and it, it changes my perspective on the story. You know, there, oh, do I need that uh, sexual euphemism there? And, you know, I, oh, I wonder if this is going to work in audio as well as it would on paper and, and all that. But for me, it's also been a push to finish the damn thing. This is going to be an episode of the Dune Steve. It's not just going to stay in my notebook. I, you know, I've got to finish it. And, and to me, part of that is that we've got people who listen to the show, who listen to this show that say, yeah, I want to read that story. Yeah, I like your writing. I want to hear more. And so I, I don't know, maybe has uh, certainly people have told you that about your writing, right? That they liked a story that, that it was in their top 10 episodes of the Dune Steve ever. Yeah, that has happened. There's been a few of those kind of things. Does definitely give you a good feeling, makes you uh, believe in yourself a little more. Well, you said this project that you're working on right now, the, the short one, it came to you while you were waiting for your car to get fixed, right? Um, it actually came to me a little bit before that. It was that same day. I I was in my living room and saw something that made me think, oh, that's interesting. That could make a good story. And then I thought, you know what? I'm going to get my car fixed today. I'm going to bring my tablet along with me with its little keyboard, and I'm going to write that. I'm going to work on that today while I'm sitting in that stupid waiting room, which I'll know I'll be spending hours of my time. Unfortunately, there was a TV show playing as well at the same time, and it was a really good show. Yeah, that honey boo-boo really does take your attention. It does. It it really does. (laughs) So I was having a hard time concentrating, but I still got like 350 words or so written while I was in the uh, the waiting room. Uh, but it seems like you said to me about that story was, you know, I got this idea, I told myself I was going to write it, and I started to write it, and it's going to be an episode of the Dune, Steve. Uh, it is, yeah, it's going to be. And it, uh, well, I kind of seemed... think that way about everything that I write now, especially since I don't write as much as I should. And it, we're, we're supposed to get to the point where one month it's your story, next month it's my story, the next month it's your story, next month it's my story. So I've got to have a story for the show, you know, every two months. And you can totally do that. Uh, yeah, That's I not could, hard. I could do that easily if I put my mind to it. But I think that way with every story that I write now that this is going to be an episode of The Dune, Steve. I don't know whether it's good or not, I guess. <laughs> well, you could toss a story over to Journey Into, too, and see if Marshall will take it. I sent him a story that was pretty much just a joke. It's a one-joke premise. And I just thought, well, I'll see what I can do with this joke. And he took it. And I, I, I still don't get why well, I look forward to that episode airing so I can hear his justification for buying that story. <laughs> yeah, I think you should keep that in mind. Well, you've done that before, though. You did a story that was just a joke. And I read that and I thought, oh, man, this is awesome. You should expand this and make it even more awesome. And you're like, no, dude, it's just a joke, man. That's all there is to it. I can't go any further. Well, if you want, we could run that story as an incentive episode. The expanded version that I I wrote to please you. (laughs) And we could tell people, hey, you can go over to Way of the Buffalo or wherever the short version of that story is and listen to that. And you can listen to this long version and you decide which one is better. If you want to do that, I, I... Yeah, that might be fun. But yeah, you were telling me about... you. Tell, tell the uh, the folks at home a little bit more about your experience with the magic spreadsheet. Oh, it's just been fun. The, the points system... I, you know, I'm not one of those people that likes to compete, that likes sports and all that, and, you know, is... The football team from my college alma mater is way better than the football team that you don't play on and you don't know any of the players of at your alma mater. You know, none of that stuff ever makes any sense to me because I didn't achieve any of that stuff. You know, the sports thing. Uh Uh-huh. But you 
doing a marathon or whatever where you're actually participating. That I can understand. And this, the way you presented it to me, it was like, you know, I'm going to kick your butt at this. <laughs> it was a competition. And for some reason, I responded to that. And I, I had a story in mind that I was going to write for the Dune Steve for us to record and maybe you and me and Marshall and Brian or, you know, the same guys that we had do the new media expo with us to record. And I said, well, on March 1st, I'm going to start that story and I'll keep track of how many words I write and uh, we'll see. And it was so easy that first day to write 250 words. I mean, if you're listening and you think, wow, 250 words, that's over 100. Mathematically, you're correct. But it's so few words, 250 words. I mean, you can pound that out in like seven or eight minutes. Yeah. And I, I got like multiple points on the first day. I was just like, wow, this is easy. And so the next day I did it again just to see, you know, my points rack up because you get more points for writing two days in a row than you would just writing – a bunch of words on one day. And, and so, yeah, I started to just push myself to do it every single day, even if I was tired. And even if it was like 3.15 in the morning and I, I should go to sleep, I was like, yeah, but this chain thing is really fun to rack up points. So, yeah, I would write until and then do a, a number check, a word count, and then write a little bit more. And it's like, okay, I've reached my 250 words. I can go to sleep. And uh, I was under the impression that you were in the same boat and that we would be having a lot of fun, kind of the way that you were talking about your weight loss competition at work and that there was a big uh, a scoreboard on the wall that didn't say your names but said your nicknames and what, how many pounds you had lost and you were able to compare and contrast and say, oh, I'm totally better than that guy. And it, I don't know. That sounded fun. It has been fun. Unfortunately, I haven't been as, as good at it as you as of right now, you have 84 points and I have 28. Oh. Which just means that you are way more consistent. You, I, I actually have written 4,555 words and you've only written 10,202 words. So that shows you how much points you can get for being consistent versus just writing a lot. Because, I mean, you've only doubled my word total, but you've quadrupled my point total. But yeah, you know, it, it is. It's really fun. And I actually got on because they have a live leaderboard that you can look at. And I just got on there just to see where I fit in on all of that kind of stuff. And it was interesting. I mean, a lot of people have been doing it for much longer than us. So they had way more points just to begin with. I mean, the first day they got 30 whatever points because their chain is already 30 days long kind of a thing. Oh, so it'll take a long time to be able to catch up to them, I suppose. Uh, I guess we'd have to write for 30 days straight to be anywhere in their neighborhood. But one of the really cool things about it is it's open for anybody. Anybody can get in there and be a part of it. And, you know, on my other show, the Ankle Cast that I do, I invited anybody who wanted to do it with me to do it. And I think as of yet, Marshall Latham is still the only person that took me up on it. And I think we had to chide him a little bit, right? Didn't you bug him several times on Facebook? And I think I know that I did a few times saying, no, you can still do it, you know, because he's like, oh, I missed the first day or something like that. And I'm like, no, no, just just get on. But uh, yeah, anybody who's listening to the show that likes to write and, you know, would like to be in a competition against us and Marshall Latham... You know, you're totally welcome to do that. Get yourself on there and and start writing and start putting on your word count and it'll make you better. Being consistent and making a habit of writing will turn you into a writer, but writing a little bit here, a little bit there, not a lot here and none there is not going to turn you into a writer. So to, if you would like to be a part of it, check it out. There'll be a link in the show notes to the uh, magic spreadsheet and just come and join in. We put our names in the Google Plus spreadsheet just because they have several different ones. Some of them are for I Should Be Writing. 
uh, people who hear, heard about it on the I Should Be Writing podcast, you know, they join and put their names on the I Should Be Writing one. And apparently there's a Stone Coast, which I think is some kind of writer. Like a retreat? Yeah, I think it's something like that. But I'm not really sure what it is, to tell you the truth. And then there's one for people who heard about it by way of Google+. Plus. Maybe if we get enough people, they'll put one in there for the Doonstief, and there can be a special Doonstief-only spreadsheet. You know, if we get enough people, we could do that. I'd be excited and think that was really cool. But yeah, if you're interested, try it out. It, You know, one time you said in your uh, Facebook post that the magic spreadsheet must indeed be magic because it has caused you to write every day this month. Yeah, it's it's pretty fun, and I really I really enjoyed it. And you know, the story that I'm writing right now, I probably would never even have started. I pr- I would have forgotten about the idea by now, if it hadn't been for the magic spreadsheet, where I was like, okay, I finished my last story. I just got this idea today. I'm gonna write it right now. Okay, well, I'm gonna put you on the spot here, man. Whoa. What is what is that story called? Uh, I haven't been able to come up with a good okay. title for it. It hasn't it was got balloon- a title balloon story it's called it's a balloon story give me a tiny bit of what the story is about and tell the listeners that by the time this episode airs that story will be done okay and 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 swear it on the life of your third born child all right it's funny because it it, the story involves my third born child under a pseudonym no she's not she's not called her real name in this story But, uh, okay, so it's a story called Balloon Story. The inspiration of the story was a balloon that uh, we got a bunch of balloons for our kids on Valentine's Day. One for each one of them. You know, those little balloons that are mylar balloons and they have something written on them or whatever. Okay. And so there was this one balloon where it had lost enough helium to where it wasn't floating all the way up at the ceiling. It was just kind of floating around at about eye level all the time. It was weird, this balloon. It seemed to be lurking. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it seemed to be lurking. Like it had some kind of devious purpose in mind. And it was just kind of there and you walk into a room and then all of a sudden you turn around and it's right behind you or you... I came home one day and I swear it was right behind the kitchen counter and and it had a, a animal face on it and the eyes of the animal were like just peeking up over the kitchen counter and looking at me as I came in the door and so this story is about this lurking balloon and it's devious purpose and by the time this episode comes out I will have finished writing this story And it will be an episode of the Dune Steve. All right. I swear on my third born child. Okay. Well, you heard it there, Chuck. Who was in the story under a different name. I don't know if that's a motivation, (laughs) but I I hope that people bug you about it. And I hope that you feel like a right bastard if this episode airs (laughs) and you didn't finish writing that story. Well, I I think it'll only take me one more day of writing to have it done. So. Okay. Yeah, I would feel like a right boss that could have i would have not written for a long time for that to happening well do you want to come up with some other announcement or goal or vow then while we're recording this i will i mean what it would be great is for you to say i swear on your life outfield that i shall pass you by in the magic spreadsheet and all that but you have so much more going on than i do you know people tugging you in this way and that for your attention and your time that that you might not be able to make that vow well i i will i I swear on your life outfield that i will pass you eventually oh yes it will happen but wait 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 what what happens if you fail if you've sworn on my life that that, well then i have to kill you of course <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, it's a it's a sacrifice that I'm willing to make. All right, let's uh, <laughs> try and encourage Big to write. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I swear that I will indeed pass you, and it may not, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon, and, and for, for the, the rest, rest of your life. life. 
for the rest of your sad, pitiful life. <laughs> uh, and you know me too. Uh, I came up with an idea the other day while driving about an old man, an old decrepit gunfighter that comes into a Arizona town, you know, and he goes into the saloon and orders a drink and the uh, the bartender gives him a drink and he asks yeah and he's got like a palsied hand and the bartender's just like geez how could this guy you know be a gunfighter and he asks the bartender who's the worst man in town and the bartender tells him and you know within an hour that worst man in town lies dead and this gunfighter, now a young man, leaves town. Mm -hmm. And uh, anyhow, I came up with this uh, this story, this idea, and it's like, oh, I'm going to write this after my story that I'm currently working on. And, and so I vow on – also on the life of your third-born <laughs> child that I will write that story by the time this episode airs. Wow. You got to finish uh, Unreleased, is it? Yeah. Unreleased is really close though. Yeah. And Baby Talk is done. It's done, but it's got a terrible title. I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> baby Talk? That's not a saying. And that's the whole reason that I <laughs> called it Baby Talk. I mean, besides the fact that that's what the story's about, was so that we could say, but Baby Fishmouth is... Yeah, is, maybe uh, you should change the title to Baby Fishmouth. I considered that, <laughs> but that doesn't fit the story. Uh, oh, Baby, baby Fishmouth, Fishmouth is, is sweeping, sweeping the, the nation. nation. <laughs> uh, Baby Talk fits that story. I've already told you what it's about and all that. Yeah, I think it works. But, it, but it's a lame title. And uh, my second title, my fallback for it, is Baby on Board, like they had in the 80s with the little sign. Right. But you know what? I hate that one more. <laughs> Baby Talk is at least a saying. <laughs> That's not a saying. <laughs> but... I don't know what to do on that. It, uh, how big a deal is a title for you? What if your story ends up being called The Balloon Story? See, I don't know. I have a hard time with titles. I'm not like you where I can just pull out some song title and use it. Or you bastard. I, I have a really hard time coming up with titles. Usually if I've got a good title, I'll have it from the beginning. And otherwise, I may never come up with the title. I don't know. You know, it's funny because it, in sci-fi, you get a lot of what I would call terrible titles. For example? You know, there'll, there'll be ones like, I'm not a fan. Like, I love Jason Sanford's stories, but I don't like the titles that he puts on them. You know, Plague Birds is a good one, but... Um, what was the second Plague Birds called? The Ever Dreaming Verdict of Plagues. Yeah, The Ever Dreaming Verdict of Plagues was probably not a very good title. Or... Thorns. So when thorns are the tips of trees or, you know, they, they sound like a line that was snipped out of a poem and just thrown in there. And I'm not a big fan of poems either. So maybe that's why. Or you'll get other titles where they're like, uh, you know, it'll sound like some kind of a philosophical paper or something like that. It's like musings on a theme by... Wagner. I don't know what they they are, but there's lots of titles that are kind of like that that you get in uh, science fiction where they're long for no good reason and so forth, where they're really just kind of forgettable. They don't catch you and grab you and make you think they're not, you know, like movie titles have always been that kind of way where they try and make them very short. You know, they're generally not something where you're going to get something that just goes on and on, like standing outside a broken phone booth with money in my hand or something like that is not going to be the title of a movie. But sometimes they're too short. They become nondescript. They become catch-alls. They become uh, – like uh, when Ben Affleck made that movie The Town, I was just like, really? The Town? Oh, that's an awful title or Brave. Right. Ugh, you know, something like that. Well, Brave was bad because it had a real title that worked and they killed it for something shorter that didn't work, you know, it had nothing to do with anything. It was just a random word. I ha I wrote a script once that was called The Hunter and the Hunted and I took it to our teacher and I showed it to him and he goes, huh, The Hunter and the Hunted. And then before he even like read any further, he's like, oh, well, I'd like it better if it was just called The Hunted. Really? 
<laughs> and I just thought, oh, interesting. Oh, see, I don't at all. <laughs> the, the hunter fun. and the hunted sounds lyrical to me in a way that the hunted doesn't. Yeah, and it was more about the hunter than the hunted anyways. So if it was going to be called anything, I guess it could be called the hunter. But it can go in the other direction. But that's one of those things where they tr- they strive for is those you know succinct titles that uh, is something you can remember really easily and always it, it's right there. Uh, you know the the one word or the the two or three small words that you know really mean something. As opposed to just some something really long and and silly, I I think in my adult life, uh, the title that I would always kick around as being the worst title for a movie that I ever heard was "Ballistic: Colon X versus Sever." <laughs> <laughs> but geez, there was a movie. I think it was last year. It was 2012, called "The Echelon Conspiracy." And I was just like, oh, my gosh, man, that is so, so bad. Yeah, that, that kind of goes up there with like Quantum of Solace. It's like, what? I saw that movie and I have no freaking idea what they're talking about with the Quantum of Solace. Do you know what that means? What what they're after? I know. And, and it's just, yeah, they, they tried to excuse it away in the movie by having the evil organization be called Quantum but that still doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah, that was a, a, another pretty bad title where it could have gone for something much simpler and it would have worked a lot better. But yeah, I think Baby Talk is a good title. It's it's simple and it it's what the story's about. So I think it works. I don't know wh- why you dislike it. Oh, well, well, if you think that it should be called that, then I guess we can talk about that when the episode airs. But yeah, it, there's there's already other worries of whether that story will work or not. And so, yeah, just uh, I, I guess I shouldn't focus on the title anymore. <laughs> it's the whole uh, rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic kind of thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see. I don't know. I The temptation... Of having our own show is, you know, everything that I write is good enough for us to podcast. But that may not necessarily be so. I still need to be discerning and say, you know, well, what is going to entertain? What is What do I think is good enough that I want my name on? And to put in X number of hours or have Brian Lincoln put in X number of hours producing. And so, yeah, I am a little worried that the story's not good. But I, I don't know. I, I Would you tell me if the story wasn't good? I don't know. You might throw a fit and like hate me for a, a month if I was to say something like that. So I, I would have to <laughs> think about whether I would tell you or not. Okay. <laughs> I think I gave you a bad score on one of your uh, Broken Mirror stories and you uh, held it against me for many moons. Huh, that... That sounds like me, and yet I know it's you. (laughs) All right, so I guess we've talked a little bit about this, and we will continue to talk. You know, every fourth or fifth episode we'll talk about writing, so that's been this one. There you go. I'm Big Anklevich. I'm Rish Outfield, and we are writers. That's right. No one can tell us we're wrong. (laughs) Searching our hearts. For so long. Love is a battlefield. And your mountain is waiting. So Uh, get on your way. (laughs) Good night. See ya. Please, sir. That gets my goat is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. But you're free to steal it. Hey, do, do you mind if I put like a super gay magical sound effect every time you said magic spreadsheet? <laughs> if you want to, I could get you like a little, uh, one of those little chimey things where like their fingers run across the chimes and it makes like a bring. Yes, that works. Okay. Um, and we'll never acknowledge it. <laughs> All right.